In this video, we're going to have a look at how we integrate sine squared x and cos squared x. So we'll start off looking at sine squared x. Think about which double angle formula you can use to change sine squared x into a function so it can be integrated. Remember, we can integrate compound angles. It's the power that's the problem here. In fact, there's only really one double angle formula which includes sine squared x, and that's the cos double angle. So if we use this variation here, where ra for the cos 2a is x. So cos 2a equals 1 minus 2 sine squared a. If we rearrange this, So if we rearrange to make sine squared a the subject, I'll take the two sine squared a over there, subtract the cos 2a, we get 1 minus cos 2a equals 2 sine squared a, and then divide by 2. So we get half times 1 minus cos 2a. We can now integrate this. We can integrate compound angles like this. So we've now got an expression we can integrate. The 1 integrates to x. Cos integrates to sine, doesn't it? Remember your sc minus s minus c, and then the opposite way around for integrating. And it's over this 2 here, isn't it? the derivative of the compound angle. So we end up with sine 2x over 2. And don't forget the plus c. Remember in the core 3 mock, you were penalised if you forgot the plus c. OK, that's all there is to it. That's how we integrate sine squared x. So now your turn. Here's a couple of important ones. First one, pretty straightforward. Cos squared x, very, very similar to what you've just done. So see if you can do it for yourself. This one might require a bit more thought, but again, think double angle formulae and see if you can come up with something to find an expression that you can integrate. Bear in mind here that although it looks like we could use parts, if we did, we wouldn't really get anywhere, would we? Our right-hand side integral will keep rotating these trig functions, so we won't get anywhere with integration by parts. So we need an expression. Again, think double angles. Pause the presentation. Have a go. OK, the cos squared x, as I said before, very, very similar to the sine squared x. This time we use this variation of the double angle formula for cos. Rearrange to make cos squared a, in this instance, the subject. Here we've got something we can integrate. R a is in fact x, isn't it? So we'll integrate this here. Again, the 1 inter the integrates to x, cos integrates to sine, and it's over the 2, and of course that important plus c at the end. OK, for the second one, hopefully you managed to work out that it's actually the sine double angle we use. Sine double angle gives us two lots of sine a cos a, which is very similar to here, isn't it, if we replace a for x. We've just got twice as many here, so if we half this side, we can now use half sine 2x and integrate that. Sine integrates to minus cos, and it's over 2. So we end up with this expression here, and again, don't forget the plus c. OK, well, hopefully you were successful with those. We're going to carry on in the same vein in the lesson. So if you're not 
100% sure, then maybe just go quickly back over it. It shouldn't take, hopefully, too long. OK, you can see here we've just multiplied out the denominator. OK, so quick recap then. The two important rearrangements of the cos double angle formula for integrating sine squared a and cos squared a are these on the right hand side. Good idea to remember them if you can, or at least be aware that this is what you do and be able to fairly quickly rearrange the double angle formula. Remember I stressed at the time that we learnt those how important it was to remember those two involving sine squared a and cos squared a.